kind introduction. So once again, thanks to my dear brother, Dr. Benji Sabu for this kind invitation. And hello to everyone uh, sitting over here. It sounds as if this is a very common title and uh, this probably you could have listened earlier to. But today I am going to focus on something which is a continuation to what Navadi Sir has said. And that is on cost-effective solutions for our own country. So we need to customize. All the patients are not the same. And we need to choose the best for our patients. We are all clinicians. That is the reason why we are here attending this conference. And this happens to us almost every day. Every second this happens to us. And a person is in front of you. And you are there as a doctor. And whom to blame? The hemoglobin A1C remains the same. Whom to blame? Is it the doctor to be blamed or the patient to be blamed? And I will say that in more than 50% of the cases, the doctor has also to be blamed for the high hemoglobin A1C because we have our own limitations, we have our own the so-called clinical inertia and there are multiple reasons why you are probably not going ahead with the next step in the management of diabetes. And this is that scenario, a 52-year-old female, thanks to Dr. Praveen, my dear friend from Biocon for sharing this slide with me. And uh, this is a lady with eight years duration of diabetes, eight years. And a classical case, uh, a case which is in front of you in your clinic. And uh, during the COVID times, during the past two years, uh, the hemoglobin A1C has gradually gone up. And this has happened to many, many of our patients, many patients. So now when we are with a person in our clinic, and uh, Sari is agreeing with me, the average hemoglobin A1C is around 9, 10, 11. So that is the scenario now, very common. And she says that she is obeying your command, she is exercising, trying to exercise despite limitations, she is trying to be adhering to the diet and the drugs. But despite all these, uh, <coughs> the so-called obedient patient, despite that, the hemoglobin A1C is rising. And uh, she is on uh, three oral therapies, she is on, unfortunately, the uh, highest dose of glimipiride, already on very high dose of glimipiride, metformin is there, and the glyptin is there, along with other usual medications for diabetes. So luckily for her, the renal function, you can see it is normal. And uh, there is early neuropathy. And uh, this is also a representation of a fairly early person. So it is not an advanced diabetes, not advanced for all these complications to set in. So now is the time for you to prescribe a medicine. So we have uh, examined the person, you have gone through the laboratory report, and now you are brainstorming. What should you be prescribed? What should be the change in the prescription? So should I be changing the dose of glyptin? Should I be switching over to another glyptin? Not necessarily, because the hemoglobin A1C, as you can see here, it is 9.8%. So even if you are going to change, nothing more is going to happen. So you probably will not be able to bring down the hemoglobin A1C to more than 0.25 or 0.3% further. And addition of a fourth agent. Remember the fact that the uh, person is here before you believing that you are a good doctor. And <laughs> she is already on three oral medications. And if you are going to start another one, if you are add, adding a fourth agent, actually you are not doing any justice to that patient. So the best idea here, the best option for you as a responsible doctor will be to go for insulin. Of course, you can send her for a counseling, you can send her to the registered dietitian, all this can be done. But the solution is you have to start her on insulin because she's already on three oral medications. And this happens to many, many of our patients. Why is my student failing in the exam? Is it because I am not a good teacher? Is it because she is not a good learner? Something to do with the syllabus? You have to find out. You have to find out the reason. But in my practice, and I know that in most of your practices, if the duration of diabetes is five years or approximately, I would say that seven years or more, and if the hemoglobin A1C remains higher than 7%, it is better that you don't wait. There may be many oral medications available. There may be many, maybe generic medications available. And it may further reduce the hemoglobin A1C a little bit. But if you are a sincere doctor who is aware of insulinopenia, progressive decline in the insulin secretory capacity of the beta cells, if you are aware of the glucotoxicity which can happen to the beta cells, go for insulin because that is the best and that is time-tested. 
and insulin is now one not one years old and that is the best remedy for diabetes and it can be considered insulin can be considered in multiple scenarios and i will say that use your common sense use your common sense and now you have multiple choices for insulin you have expensive insulins you are indian expensive insulins you are human insulins you have analog insulins but in the presence in the background of a persisting hyperglycemia in the background of a person who is already on steroids or infection or pregnancy don't wait watching and waiting is no longer tolerated in the management of diabetes and let me ask you a question why are you here you are here to learn something you are here to learn something from dr benji's friends and dr benji is conducting program all over the world and why is the patient coming to you the patient is coming to you because he, he could have gone to some other nearby doctor he could have gone to an indigenous doctor nearby but the person with diabetes is attending your clinic and is with you for your prescription because he believes that you are getting updated you are learning a lot you are updated with your knowledge and he believes you as a doctor that you will give him the best you will he give him the best based on evidence and that is where you have to be sincere with your patient and the patient believes that you are a brilliant doctor who knows about the beta cell function and decline and you are brilliant enough to provide the person not just short term outcomes but also better long term outcomes in diabetes because this entity is very very important long term outcomes in diabetes after 10 years or after 20 years of onset of diabetes and here is the conflict whether you should be starting insulin late or early if you are starting insulin after the onset of a retinopathy or a neuropathy or a cardiovascular disease of course it is very very late it is very late you have to start insulin very very early in diabetes these are because i have included only one of our own studies and this we have presented at the as meeting long ago and this is from our electronic medical records telemedicine uh, data and uh, just 57 patients followed up for a period of 10 years insulin always need not result in weight gain when you are practicing structured monitoring of blood glucose is yes, smpg and when you are carefully and when you are smart enough in titrating the dose of insulin insulin will not produce hypoglycemia and insulin need not produce and in this study you can see that not only the hemoglobin a1c has dropped there was also a significant reduction in the total daily dose of insulin at the end of one decade and there was also weight loss at the end of one decade and this happens when you can avoid hypoglycemia by just providing the essential dose of insulin and this has also appeared in multiple media uh, uh, along with the as meeting so there are there are benefits you know all the benefits and i need not repeat all those benefits of early insulin initiation in protecting the beta cells and in uh, ensuring the long term efficacy in preventing the complications of diabetes why i am repeatedly showing this slide there is a reason why we are exposed to some of these slides repeatedly because you can discuss the same numbers and the same reasons with your own patients the patients need not be that educated but with basic education you can start a conversation and you can extend the dialogue and you can discuss all these possibilities this is why i am offering you insulin because i know what will happen to you after 5 years i know what will happen to you after 10 years and that is exactly the reason why i am discussing the possibility of putting you on a analog basal insulin and look at the reduction the death which can happen if i can reduce hemoglobin a1c by 1 percentage i can reduce the death in diabetes by 21% myocard infarction by 14 but all these numbers can be discussed the microvascular complications retinopathy neuropathy and nephropathy with 1% reduction it comes down to 37% reduction in the complications and these are known to us for many many decades but the only difference here is there are around 100000 new doctors every year passing in india <laughs> mbbs doctors so we need to repeatedly educate we need to be repeatedly exposed to uh, the education and the new knowledge and not only with the respect to the reduction in the complication you know that every 30 seconds two legs are being amputated so you can discuss with the person with diabetes there will be relatives in the family 
there will be somebody known to the patient who could have underwent an amputation with just 1% reduction in the hemoglobin a1c the amputations are reduced by 43% so all these possibilities but these are all positive things you are not discussing any negative things you are discussing about the positive outcomes the patients can experience by starting insulin early and by offering them with a basal insulin you are also ensuring that there is a minimal occurrence of hypoglycemia this is 40 study which demonstrated minimal weight gain when compared to premix insulins basal insulins have got multiple other advantages and many patients will ask you can i be only on insulin with type 2 diabetes can i stop all the oral drugs can be can i be only on insulin and that is the time when you can tell them there are multiple reasons for type 2 diabetes there are multiple pathophysiological defects in type 2 diabetes apart from insulin secretory deficiency there is insulin resistance there is a de- defect in the renal tubule so you have to be on two or three maybe two oral medications along with insulin and insulin cannot be given alone and that you have to repeatedly tell them basal insulin all them are offering a glargin as a basal insulin that cannot be alone given to you it need to be combined with one or two other oral therapies so there are global recommendations so i am not deciding on my own my dear friend i am deciding based on the recommendations made by global as well as the national scientific organization so this is our own beloved idf ada yes and if you are uh, suspecting on your own efficacy your own capacity on deciding on the dose of insulin the beginning dose or the initial dose can be 0.1 to 0.2 units per kilogram to start with the basal insulin so this is fairly a very safe way of starting insulin so that you are not inducing hypoglycemia so 0.1 unit per kilogram body weight very small dose or you can start with 8 units or 10 units of basal insulin provided make sure that you are titrating you are changing or modifying the dose of insulin at least twice a week or at least once a week and there are other choices there are other choices as well why not start on a premix insulin because that is another very commonly used insulin but at the expense of weight gain at the expense of a hypoglycemia because there are chances that you start the person on 10 units of a premix insulin and on the fourth day he might fall unconscious because of a hypoglycemia and they will not come back to you because if you are starting them on a basal insulin such as glargin with very low instances of hypoglycemia then there are more chances that the patient will fall off with you otherwise you may even lose the person and the other choice is going for an nph insulin have a second thought should i be going for nph insulin nph is fairly an old insulin nph is there for multiple decades all over the world of course you can start her on nph insulin provided the priority is only the cost but if you are concerned in the science you are going back in the discovery because there are multiple other options which has come after the discovery of nph insulin and here we have started her on glargin and we have started 0.1 unit per kilogram and uh, ultimately at the end of 3 months we have gone up to 32 units and we have been very successful as a doctor in bringing down the a1c from 9 to 7.4% so very successful without any episodes of hypoglycemia and she is using an insulin pen so whenever possible if you go through the discovery or innovation related to insulin delivery devices that has also been a phenomenal innovation so we have multiple newer innovations for delivering insulin so offer them with an insulin pen which is also cost effective which is convenient so whenever you are making a choice make it comfortable for the person and how do you decide on going to the next step in the management so from basal insulin if after a few months or if after a few years if you feel as if diabetes is not controlled that is a time when you have to introduce one more insulin one more insulin and that can be a prandial insulin and this is the most scientific way of titrating the dose of insulin if you are starting the person on a premix insulin the person need to match the diet with the insulin dose whereas in contrast to that scenario here you are matching the dose of insulin with the diet that she is going to consume so here if the uh, if you are uptitrating the dose of insulin 
you can go up to one unit per kilogram, which is a very high dose for a basal insulin. And if in case the person cannot tolerate, if in case the person is experiencing a hyperglycemia or if the postprandials are elevated, this is a time when you have to introduce a bolus insulin as well. Lovely picture, isn't it? So this is only to symbolize your love, your sincerity and commitment to your patient when you are offering them an insulin. When you are offering them with one of the best, Glargin is still the world leader in insulin as one of the safest insulin. And this is how you can decide on a bonus dose of insulin. So you start with basal and then you can start with, if necessary, three, four or six units of a bolus insulin, such as Epidra, before the largest meal of the day. And if you want to do some little bit of mathematics, this is how you can do the maths. A dose based on the patient's weight will be 0 0.05 units per kilogram. And you need the support. You need to refer to the international guidelines. We have the American Diabetes Association strongly recommending a basal insulin and then adding on to the basal a bolus and then you have i like ace more than ada because ace is more scientific ace is more structured in creating the guidelines so you can start with one bolus then you can move up to two bolus dosages if required and then finally you can establish a basal bolus regimen whereas the insulin dose will be minimal optimized for only the diet the person is consuming so i repeat in contrast to premix, when you are using a basal or a basal plus, the dose of insulin is optimized only for the diet the lady is consuming. And if you are again concerned about how you are going to titrate the dosages of insulin, you have the guidelines, international as well as national. So these are all very simple guidelines. Ask the person to just measure the fasting glucose levels repeatedly or once in two or three days and based on the fasting glucose levels if it is above 180 you give approximately eight units or you can even give four units so this is another simplified version of the algorithm from rssdi esi guidelines where we were all there and this is how you have to decide if the fasting is more than 180 you can add four units to the existing basal if it is more than 140 add two units if it is more than 110 add one unit. remember you have to decide and you have to customize what is the required fasting target for the person so that you are not inducing a hypo if in case there is a hypoglycemia you have to drastically reduce the dose of the basal insulin so this is the take home point in india we do have multiple choices of insulin now but there is only one interchangeable basal analog insulin currently available in india so i was speaking to my dear friend ajit and uh, ajit pal singh sir was telling me that all over the world there is only one interchangeable basal analog insulin and that is the definition interchangeable means one medicine can be substituted for the other and this can be done even by a pharmacist in the united states and uh, this is done because the substituted or the changed interchangeable medication will have the same clinical effect exactly the same clinical benefit in the given clinical scenario and that is the comparison between the two insulins the reference of the innovator glargin when compared to the interchangeable glargin and that is from our own india made in india what is the difference and this is what you can discuss further with your patient or you can brainstorm on yourselves or with your colleagues the huge difference in the cost the huge economic difference the made in india innovation can make and these are the take home points we need to be responsible we need to be responsible as doctors practicing in india to provide the best but in diabetes I think time matters. I have only 40 seconds left. Okay, so time matters in diabetes. You are waiting and watching. Your patient is going to develop all those devastating complications. So let us be responsible doctors, offering the best at the right time, at the right time for our patients with diabetes. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear friends, for the patient hearing.